The next logical step in using the pi, which is sitting back here, is to do something like detect a uh, something happening. So what I've got is I've got a, an infrared photodiode over here, the black one, and then I've got an infrared LED, and the infrared LED produces light, and the photodiode uh, detects it. So when something comes in between these, it uh, it will detect that something has changed. So in this setup what happens is that the normal uh, circumstance is that the light is on, that the photodiode detects the light, and when the circuit is broken then I want the pi back here to detect that. Uh, so let's run over the circuit board quickly and take a look at that. This on this side is just a plain old LED. I mean it's an infrared LED but it works the same. And what happens is over here I've got it hooked to pin 11. And we know how to turn an LED on and off of the Pi. I've done that experiment. You can look uh, at the, the uh, video I did on that. So we know how to turn it on and off. It just, uh, the power will pass through here, go through the LED, through the resistor to the ground, and the ground wires back here. And I'm using, I believe, pin 6 for the ground. Uh, any of the grounds will work. So that's pretty simple. Uh, with a program I can turn the LED on and off, but in this case I'm leaving it on most of the time. It's the other side that's more interesting. The other side is the actual detector. It's the input. And what is happening here is I am using pin 7 and I've made it an input. So that's the yellow wire. Pin 7 comes over here and it connects to the positive side of the photodiode and the negative side of the photodiode will come over here through uh, a resistor just like the other LED does and then to ground. But on this side what's interesting and what's different is it's not just a wire directly to the positive side of the photodiode. I've got this one mega ohm resistor that's going to the power, going to the 3.3 .3 power, in this case pin 1, it's that red wire. and It goes back over there in the background you can see so what's strange about this is it's a little bit reversed. What happens is that uh, under normal circumstances the photodiode is going to see the light from the LED and it's going to be turned on. So electricity will flow from the yellow wire through here, through the resistor and into the ground. And it will basically uh, look like a, a uh, short. So when the photodiode is on it's it acts like a switch. A switch is turned on so it's going to be a direct connection basically between the pin 7 and the ground. So the detection here will be 0 volts basically. Okay, when you break the, the light beam, the switch here, the photodiode will turn off and here's the tricky part. Power will pass from the 3.3 .3 volt power supply here to the yellow wire and it will detect 3.3 .3 volts. So it's kind of the opposite. When the beam is broken, when the beam is broken, the switch is off and the yellow wire will see 3.3 .3 volts. When the beam is not broken, the photodiode will turn on and the yellow wire will see 0 volts. So here I've got the program running in the background. You can see that and we can see that input equals low, the photodiode is on, the, this photodiode is turned on, and when I block it, you can see it goes off, on, off, gotta get it in the right position, on, off, you can see the hole in the middle, when the hole in the middle gets in front of the LED, you can see it, and I can move over it, turns it off, so you can use this to detect like the location of a shaft, something like that. There it's on again, off again. So when the LED, when the light from the LED passes through the hole, the detector can see it, it turns on, and when it cannot, it turns off. So you can see that would be useful for a lot of different functions, for counting, for positioning, and so forth. This is the whole program right here. It's just one page long and it's quite simple really. 
Uh, we're going to use pin 7 to get input from the, from the uh, breadboard. And we're going to turn on an LED, as you saw earlier. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's, this is what the comments say. All this red stuff, just comments. They don't affect the program. It's just so that a month from now I can remember what I was doing. Uh, so these are the I libraries as we did before, the I.O. library and the time library. Uh, we're doing that, going to set up the board to use the board numbering system. I like that better. A lot of people say otherwise, but I like the board numbering system. We're going to use pin 11 as the output to run the infrared LED. And we're going to use pin 7 as input to get our input from that photodiode. Here's the main loop right here. I'm going to do this section 250 times. So first I go into here, I turn on the LED, which is important. I need to have that LED light going. Uh, and then I'm going to check to see if it's turned on or off. So the first thing I do is if it's off, okay, off, I print input equals high photodiode off. And otherwise I print it is low, the photodiode is on. And obviously we could use, put in a counter here, we could count how many times this happened, whatever. As it reaches the bottom, it says sleep, so I'm going to wait a half a second before I start this loop again. And that's pretty much, this is pretty much the program right here. And then when it's done with however many iterations you choose, it comes down here. It turns off the LED just to be neat and clean about this, to do a, be a good programmer. I print the word done so that I know that the program finished normally and didn't crash. And then the last thing is I set all of the pins back to normal and just to kind of reset it to make sure everything is, is back to the way it was. And that is pretty much it for the uh, program. Now, this is not the cleanest way to do this, I will tell you right now, because, for example, if the program is somewhere else, when something happens, it won't get recorded here. So if it's down here and the input changes, it won't get recorded. So if your input is changing fast enough, this is not a good way to do this. But having said that, this is the simplest way to do it.